In this video, we're going to walk through the process of generating a single use Calendly link within our Salesforce email templates. Now, before we get into how to set this up, I want to show you just kind of a quick demo of what this looks like. So on this case record, I want to go ahead and dynamically generate a single use link to send to the contact related to this case. So if I come down here and I click on this insert uh, Calendly single use link email template, you'll see that it automatically generated a single use link based on my 30 minute meeting event type. So to set this up, there are a few uh, pre prerequisite packages. Um, you'll need to have the latest version of the Calendly Salesforce package. Um, you can install that from your Calendly integrations page. And then you'll also wanna install this Calendly single use link component package which will be included in the description of this video. Now, this is an unmanaged package, so if you would like to uh, copy the code inside of the package rather than installing it uh, yourself, you can totally do that. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna use this uh, component here within the package. So when you install this single use link component, you're going to have a named credential added called Calendly. And what you're going to need to do is you'll click on edit and you'll see that the username is set to Calendly. You can keep that the same. You don't need to change that. But for the password, this will need to be a personal access token from your Calendly account. So I'm going to hop over to Calendly to show you how to uh, retrieve that. So on your integrations page, you'll click on API and webhooks. Uh, you can see I have an existing token, but I'll, I'll walk through the uh, flow so you can see what this looks like. So I'll create the token, copy it, and then paste it in the password field here. And now the reason we need to do this is we need to authorize uh, your Salesforce organization to be able to send requests to Calendly to generate those links. And something important here is you'll want to make sure that the personal access token you create belongs to the organization owner or admin within Calendly. That will allow you to create single use links be on behalf of your other Calendly users. So now that we've set up the name credential, let's go take a look at the email template to see how this component works. So you'll see that I have this Visual Force email template and there's a new component here. This is what is included in that Calendly single, uh, single use link package. This component right here will be converted to the single use link when the email template is sent. So in order to determine what single or what event type we want the single use link to be associated with, we have to provide it an event type UUID. Uh, for example, you saw that I'm using my 30 minute meeting event type. Uh, in order for this to generate a link based on the 30 minute event type instead of the 60 minute, I need to clarify what uh, the UUID is of that event type. And now you can see here that I've added a simple text field to the user object to store that UUID. So you might be wondering, okay, well, how do I get the correct UUID? To do that, we're going to go edit one of the flows included in the Calendly Salesforce package. Included in the Calendly Salesforce package is this map user Calendly link template. And this is used to uh, sync the Calendly link profile URL to the user object. But we can actually customize this flow to save the event type UUID as well. So let's quickly take a look at one of the Calendly link records that is synced over uh, to Salesforce. Now you'll see here in 
the external ID field, we have this managed event type, dash, and then a UUID. This UUID right here is that event type UUID that we care about. So what we can do is we can customize the flow that Calendly provides to save this UUID to the user object. So if I come back over to the flows, um, I'm gonna just quickly open the default template and then I'll show you the customizations. So the default uh, Calendly template, it simply finds the user and then updates that user's uh, Calendly link field to the Calendly URL in that uh, link record object. So what we want to do is we instead want to save the managed event type UUID on the user record. So I'm going to hop over to the flow with the customizations to do that, and we'll walk through what that looks like. So to get started, the default Calendly flow will only run if the link is a profile link, but we want it to run on managed event type links as well. So you'll need to first update the condition requirements to none. Once you've done that, you can see here that I've added a new decision element. And this simply just checks the type of link, whether it's a managed event type link or a profile link. If it's a profile link, we do the default behavior of assigning the uh, Calendly link field on the user to that record's URL. However, if it's a managed event type, what we'll do is we will save the UUID field. And you'll see that I set it to a formula field. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here I've got the uh, external ID. And what we want to do is we want to remove this managed event types prefix. So what we're saying here is substitute on the full field managed event type dash with an empty string. This will allow us to return just the UID that we want to generate the single use link. And then once you've done that, you can activate the new custom flow. So with that, this um, will allow you to save the UUID, which you can then use to generate a single use link for each user within their email template. Now, something to note, um, you might be wondering, well, what if I have multiple managed event types? I gave the example of the 30 minute meeting or the 60 minute meeting. In that case, you may want to add another condition here, uh, such as you know checking the name equals 30 minute meeting or 60 minute meeting, or you can simply add other, uh, other UUID fields to store that. But just wanted to uh, give that as an example, as it might be a common issue you would run into. So that's it for this video. If you run into any issues with the package installation or have any questions, please don't hesitate to add a comment to this video. Thanks for watching.